I mean, basically, I started Victor Alexander Winery in um, 2005, but 2007 was the first vintage. And so I made wine in 2007, about 300 cases, and didn't actually start selling wine, of course, until 2009. So 2009, we finally hit the marketplace and had a reasonably positive response, or I'll edit that out. We'll say we had a great po positive response in the first time out the door, so that felt really good, and created a, a little tasting room in our downtown on Bainbridge Island. And so now we're moving a new tasting room with a couple of other wineries uh, that are Bainbridge Island wineries, and so we're excited about that. But So anyway, 2007, first actual vintage, 2008, 2009, made wine. So, so we're getting grapes from some really nice farms in Washington. Um, 2007 vintage came from Stone Ridge Vineyards. And 2008, I got grapes from the Cave B Winery Vineyard. Vineyard has a different name, sorry. <laughs> but so, and so I, uh, 2007, I made Merlot, Cabernet, Sangiovese, and some Pinot Noir. And it was you know, an experiment to see if I could actually produce Pinot Noir. We, it turned out very respectable, you know. And so it's a but Washington grown Pinot Noir, which you know most people think is too hot. So, but it turned out all right. And then the Sangiovese, 2007, was really good. And so, and then so 2008, I just made Merlot, and in 2009, I have. Um, Cabernet and Merlot, and then I have uh, 2009 Semillon made made by Freddy Arredondo, who is KB Winery, and so I'm packaging that up for our theater wines, and so then the the, the theater wine is something that I'm quite proud to be dealing with. We have a local playhouse theater here, and so the the donation dollars that this company, you know, that Victor Alexander has, is going to our local Playhouse Theater. So I produced a wine that I call the Theater Edition wine that is, it's a, it's a blend actually, for the red wine and the white wine are both blends. Victor Alexander Winery came from just my long time appreciation of good food and good wine. And I had a very dear friend who had a small winery that I modeled this company after. And basically, it's a company of less than 1,000 cases of wine per year. And my, even though I'm not there, my goal is to get to that level of production. But so anyway, I want to stay small. I want to keep it small and domestic. I'm you know, in a small community. And you know, I'd like to think of it as a community wine, but you know, our, our um, our community has a, a small tourism industry, which, you know, so I'm getting supported by both ends of that, that industry. But the, the main idea is to have a small, domestic, homespun type operation that is fun for everyone to visit, you know, for my neighbors to come when, when you know, when they want to have some good wine and good conversation and fun for, you know, tourists when they're visiting town, come on over. And, and so the goal is to be domestic, comfortable, easy, and really good wine. <laughs> Being a small company like I'm trying to be, it doesn't warrant having an industrial type facility. You know, so I, I'm lucky enough that at my, where I live, that I have a few buildings that were left over of a um, a farm that this property used to be a giant farm, and we so the winery is actually what was once the um, tractor garage for this farm, and so basically I have a couple of these little buildings that I'm trying to turn into this company, and you know it's like we have two and a half acres. The house is there. We have a nice garden, and so when people come, it it's a a very domestic experience, and you know, I mean, that's 
the kind of thing that like we're all doing here on Bainbridge, but you know, I I'm really pleased to be part of what's going on because like my vision was small and domestic, and then my friends who have these other wineries, you know, they're, they're we're all kind of in the same league and.